as promised, in this part of our ongoing Agario tutorial series, we'll be tackling the random food generation system. The way that we'll be designing it is that a new food bit will be spawned every x seconds. And although implementing this sounds difficult, the code that we're going to write is actually quite similar to the random color generation. We will also be learning about one of the most powerful tools in Unity, the prefab. So let's jump in. To begin with, we need to create the food object. This will be the object that's spawned every few seconds. So, just like we did with the player mesh, we're going to click Game Object, 3D Object, Sphere. Now that the sphere has been created, we can name it a little more appropriately. Currently the food is the same size as the player, which isn't at all like Agario. So what we can actually do is change the scale of the object on the X and Y axis to something like 0.3. Now that we've created the food object, it's time to convert it to a prefab. Before we can create the prefab, we need to know the difference between prefabs and game objects. We already know what game objects are because we've been using them to create our player, mesh and main camera. Basically everything in the hierarchy view that we've made so far is a game object. On the other hand, a prefab is just like a game object, only it's stored in the project view. This means that it's reusable and can have many copies of itself, which is perfect for spawning food. To begin with, we're going to create a folder to store our prefabs. Now, to create a prefab from the food game object, we can simply drag it from the hierarchy to the project window. Now, once we delete the game object, we've successfully made a prefab of our food object. Now we can create the script that will create a new instance every few seconds. So in our scripts folder, we'll right click, create, C sharp script. And once again, although the name you choose is optional, I'll name it spawn. Once that code file has been opened in your IDE of choice, we can delete the default code provided by Unity. First, we need a variable that will refer to the food prefab that we just created. Because we want this to be displayed in the inspector, we'll use the keyword public, followed by the data type. Well, the type that we use for this is game object. Note the capital G and O. Now we can provide a name for this because I have chosen food. Whenever I refer to food in the code, we're actually talking about the food prefab that we created. Now we need one more variable. This will determine how quickly Unity should spawn the food. Make this a public float because we might want some decimal places. I'll name this speed. Now we're going to create our own function. This is just a block of code that we can call whenever we want. So the way we define a function is to first write the return type, which in our case is void, meaning that it does not return anything, followed by the name. I chose generate in this example. And now we need an opening and closing pair of parentheses. In here, we would normally write our parameters, but we don't need any. Inside this function, we're going to begin by generating a random x and y position. To do this, we need to declare an integer variable for the x. Then set that equal to a random number between 0 and the screen's width. To do this, we say equals random.range. And now the parameters of random.range are the lowest and highest value, which would be 0 and camera.main.pixelWidth which just gets the camera's width. Now we can do the exact same thing for the Y axis, only remembering to use the camera's height instead of width. Now that we have the random coordinates, we need to convert those to world point. We've actually done this before in our follow script. So we first need to store that result in a vector three, meaning an X, Y, and Z axis. Once we have named it, we can set it to a world point using camera.main dot screen to world point. This function takes a vector three as a parameter, which will just be the randomly generated X and Y positions, which we can do by writing new vector three, then in parentheses X comma Y comma zero. Once we've ended the line in a semicolon, we need to fix the Z axis of this variable by simply writing position dot Z equals zero semicolon. Although we now have the position of the food to spawn, we need a way to spawn it. Luckily, Unity has a function called instantiate, which we can call by writing instantiate. The first parameter is the object that we want to spawn, which is the food variable that we declared earlier. 
Next, we need to give it a position, which is just the position variable. And finally, this function needs a rotation. Because we always want it to be aligned with the world axis, we can use quaternion.identity, which basically equates to no rotation. Although the code that we just wrote works, because it's in its own function, it's never called. So, in the void start, with a capital S, this is called once at the beginning of our game, we can use the function invoke repeating, which just calls a function over and over again. The first parameter is the function that we want to call. Be sure to surround this in quotation marks, as this function requires a string. Next, the function needs an offset, which is how long we should wait before it starts spawning. We can set this to zero. Finally, we need to pass it a number, which is how often to spawn. This is just our speed variable. Now, once we save, we can jump back into Unity. And before we can start spawning, we need to create an empty game object named Spawner. We will attach our script to this object by clicking and dragging it from the project window into the inspector. Now we need to give our script the food object, which we can just grab from the prefabs folder. Finally, we can set the speed. I found 0.5 works perfectly. And now that's really it. If we run our game, we'll now see that the food is being randomly generated. Unfortunately, we can't eat the food, but that's for the next tutorial. If you just want to download the project files, there's a link in the description, as well as the code file. Finally, please consider subscribing so you won't miss the next part. Thanks. Bye.